Hello, my name is Paul Bushy, and I'd like you to welcome you to uh, the virtual tour of the Lucadia Wastewater District. Over the next several minutes, you'll get to meet some of our staff and get an in-depth view of how we go about providing our services. But before we do that, I wanted to give a brief overview of the district and the services we provide. The district is a public agency uh, that provides wastewater services to approximately 62,000 residents in the northern portions of Encinitas and the southeastern portions of Carlsbad. As a public agency, we are governed by a board of directors that are publicly elected, and we maintain a staff of 19 dedicated professionals who ensure that these services are provided in an environmentally sensitive and protective manner, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So why don't you come on and join me and you get to meet some of our staff and, and we can talk a little bit more about our district. This is a map of uh, the district service area. And as I mentioned before, we cover the southeastern portions of Carlsbad, the La Costa area, and the northern portions of Encinitas. And our job is, is essentially to take the wastewater that's generated in the service here from the businesses and residences, and we and transport it to the Encino Water Pollution Control Facility in Carlsbad, where it's treated there to a point where it can be safely discharged to the Pacific Ocean, or it can be further used for recycled water. In doing that, in addition to our wastewater service, the district also has a one million gallon a day recycled water facility. And what we do is we take the treated water from Encina, we pump it back to our facility, we then further treat it to recycle water standards, and after that it's used to irrigate the La Costa Resort and Spa's South Golf Course. Moving over to the wastewater side, as I mentioned before, we transport the wastewater to Encina, uh, we do that using a series or a network of over 200 miles of pipelines and 10 pump stations to ensure that it gets there uh, without any sewage spills and it, it and protects the environment. So over the next few minutes, you'll get to meet uh, some of our highly trained and certified staff who will take a deeper dive into the details of what it takes to provide the services that we provide and protect the environment and the public health at the same time. Hi, my name is Steve Crayson. I worked with Lucadia Wastewater District for 20 years, and my main uh, job position here is working with these pump stations for the district. We have 10 pump stations in all together. Out of those 10, we have eight of them that are called lift stations that are in residential areas and business areas. And what they do is they collect all the sewer from homeowners' uh, laterals that go through uh, an assortment of gravity line pipes into these pump stations. And the function of those lift stations is to lift the sewer from a lower elevation to a higher elevation where it'll feed into a gravity line, which feeds into our two larger pump stations. They're uh, Lucadia Pump Station and Batiquitos Pump Station. And those are our two pump stations that pump the flow of that sewage to Encina Wastewater Authority that does all of our uh, treatment of our raw sewage in our system. Of those uh, systems, we have uh, generator backup systems that we're able to handle power outages in the event that we have rolling blackouts or we just have uh, a power outage. And we also have uh, capability of running bypass pumps at some of these stations that don't have generator uh, capability. Most of these stations every month are gone through a rigorous maintenance schedule where we exercise valves, we test the alarms, uh, we make sure they're in good operations and if any repairs are needed we write them up and we get them uh, repaired as soon as possible so that we can uh, alleviate a spill. Some of the main uh, problems that we find at these pump stations uh, that we get in the sewer system uh, that are being flushed down the pipes uh, mainly are the hand wipes. The hand wipes are not a material that breaks down and they actually will clog our pumps. Uh, we found a lot of other foreign objects that can range from clothing to rocks to golf balls uh, to just a, a variety of foreign objects that shouldn't be in a sewer system and these things do cause havoc in our pumps and our check valves that do require maintenance of shutting the pumps down and pulling them apart and pulling this all material out by hand uh, to clear the pumps and get it back in operation. With these 10 pump stations in our system they are all scattered throughout the uh, communities of Encinitas, uh, a little bit of Carlsbad, uh, Lucadia, and they all have uh, pipes that are connected together and these pipes will eventually need to be cleaned. Uh, through our collection systems we have uh, vector trucks that go through and can clean those pipes and also we have TV crews that will go in and TV after the cleaning has been done. 
Hi, my name is Hugo Gonzalez. I'm a field technician three here at Lucadia Wastewater District. Field service technicians out here, we service the district. Uh, we're out here, you know, doing sewer clean, um, filming sewer lines, and basically collecting sewer that comes out of your homes and making sure it makes it all the way down to Encina uh, Wastewater Authority. Lucadia Wastewater District, we have over 5,000 manholes. Um, we have over 200 uh, miles of pipeline and over 16 square miles of or is our district. Um, this is one of our most important equipments that we use here at, at the district. This is a combination truck, also known as a vector truck. And, you know, we're able to water jet lines. We're also able to, you know, vacuum lines if we need to pull out debris from the sewer system. A lot of the waste that comes out of homes, residential homes, uh, businesses and stuff like that, sometimes, you know, people don't know proper knowledge that, you know, a lot of things shouldn't be put down, you know, the toilets uh, like rags, uh, baby wipes, uh, eggshells. We have, a, this is a big beach community. We have a lot of sand in the area. Um, so we come across a lot of that and uh, we're able, with this equipment here, we're able to retrieve all that stuff. So if we come across a, a blockage out, on, out in the community, um, we come out with this big truck. We are able to have, we have nozzles that we're able to penetrate to, through, through blockages and uh, debris out in the system. Um, if there's anything out there we come across, we're able to penetrate through it and uh, retrieve it, cut it up, retrieve it. And then uh, once you know, we retrieve it, we, we basically get rid of uh, all the stuff. So when we come out to, to the district and we're running sewer lines, um, we come out here, we'll run our, our jetter, and um, we have over 600 feet of hose that we're able to run, run, run um, sewer lines with. So once, once the jetter is in the line, say we have a cutter in there, it's gonna be a spinny nozzle, and it's gonna be cutting up debris, it's gonna be cutting up roots, and once all that's done, we're able to retrieve everything and just suck it all up. To simplify it, it's, it's bolts that all our sewer sits, all our sewer goes into these bolts and they travel from bolt to bolt and um, those bolts sometimes get you know full of full of rags, baby wipes and stuff like that. So we'll use come out here with our vacuum truck and suck them all up and you know just just make sure that our bolts are clean. Hi, my name is Todd Amos with Lucadia Wastewater District. I'm here today to talk about our CCTV system which is our closed circuit televising system with the wastewater system. Uh, I believe it's a very important part of our maintenance that we do here because we have a very firm belief in being proactive and we want to see if there's any issues with the pipes uh, that we get to them before they become a bigger problem and make sure we're proactive in that approach. Uh, basically it's just a little camera that goes into all our lines. They have 200 miles of pipe to make sure that everything's looking good down there and everything's in working order. Uh, we do it once every three years on a standard, but every once in a while we'll come out on a non-standard assignment or an emergency, so to speak, to take care of items that might need attention. We can find lots of things, as you can imagine, down there in those pipes that um, are out of sight, out of mind, and it can be anything from sand, roots, which are a big culprit from a lot of the trees around here. Um, they can impede the pipe. and. On rare occasions, we can find pool plaster, which is unusual as, as it sounds, but unfortunately when homeowners are rehabbing their pools or possibly contractors needing to dispose of the leftover plaster, it can make its way into our collections wastewater system and it can impede the pipes greatly. So um, it's an important note to please not pour anything down our pipes that shouldn't be down there. Hello, I'm James. Working with the Lucadia Wastewater District, uh, I'm in uh, FST3, which stands for Field Service Technician Grade 3. We use controllers. The controllers we use are, believe it or not, uh, depending on what system, it, we could either be using an Xbox controller, Microsoft controller, or even a PlayStation controller. They get reprogrammed, repurposed to be able to uh, run our camera. So as you can see, you know, when we're in a line, and uh, we're progressing forward and uh, if we roll up on an obstruction or a lateral we can as you can see we'll pan to the left or to the right we can go up or down and then we'll record what we find if we find anything 
We've had a chance to show you the outside of our um, CCTV truck, but I'd like a chance to show you the inside where our control booth's at. This is our control room. Uh, this is where we do all our annotations on what we see when we are filming in the sewers. The monitor on the right is a video only monitor that shows a very large picture of what we're filming in the sewers. The monitor on the left has our software that allows us to document and keep track of all the things that we find in our sewer system. It allows us to be proactive. It allows us to find and document any abnormalities we might have in the sewer system and create reports and bring them to the attention of our management team that can get these items repaired. Hi, my name is Kearney Russell, Field Service Technician 2 here at Lucadia Wastewater District. Lucadia Wastewater District covers approximately 16 square miles and services Lucadia, parts of Encinitas, and Carlsbad. There is approximately 200 miles of gravity sewer pipeline and approximately 5,000 manholes. Not all of the sewer pipeline and manholes are located on the roadways. The manholes and pipelines that are not located on the roadways are called easements. Easements can be located in customers' yards, parks, trails, and canyon areas within the district. Some challenges we face are accessing and cleaning uh, these easements. We try to maintain trails to the easements and clear brush from and around our manholes on the easements and maintain good customer relationship with homeowners who have, prop who have manholes on their property. The main reason for inspecting and cleaning easements is to prevent a future problem in our system. For example, roots growing into the sewer lines can create a blockage within the system that could lead to a sewer spill that could cause damage to the environment or to public health. Hi, my name is Rick Easton. I'm a Field Service Technician 3 here at Lucadia Wastewater District. Welcome to the Gaffner Water Reclamation Plant. I'm going to show you how we turn this into this. The water that we're receiving here at the treatment plant, we have pumped back from the Encina wastewater treatment plant. Uh, at Encina wastewater treatment plant, the water has already gone through uh, two different stages of uh, treatment. And here at Gaffner, we're going to put it through a third stage, uh, which is going to make it suitable for landscape irrigation. And my team member, Kearney Russell, will also be along to show you the plant. This is the beginning of the water treatment process. Here in the reactor clarifier, chemicals are going to get mixed with a rapid and a slow mixer. What we're trying to do is introduce a chemical to get all the suspended solids that are within the water to, to, form, a, uh, to form a solid and just settle out to the bottom. Once the chemicals settle to the bottom, it'll transfer over to the second stage. This is our second process. This is our sand filter. And what we're doing is we're pushing water up through a bed of fine sand and any of the smaller particles in the water that wouldn't settle out are captured in this fine sand. It cleans the water, it spills over the weir, and then it moves on to the uh, final process. So this is a chlorine contact chamber. This is where the water will go through the third and final process. In this process, we're gonna introduce chlorine to disinfect the water. The reason why we introduce the chlorine uh, to disinfect the water is to make it safe for human and animal contact. So after this process, this is where the water can now be pumped over to the La Costa Omni Golf Course Resort to be used for irrigation purposes. 